Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know what you're expecting today. But I hear the Lord say, I should tell you this. He has released angels on your behalf. And a miracle is going to happen today. <laughs> I'm not saying tomorrow. I say today. Believe God. He says, I'm sending the rain in this month of March. He said it. I didn't say it. I quoted him. And I believe him. If I believe him, then believe him. Don't act like the man we spoke about yesterday, the one the king sent to go get Elijah. He said, even if God opens, no, that's none of your business how God is going to do it. Just simply believe. Believe. So God said in, in Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15, that's our theme scripture. He says, until the spirit be poured out from on high, and the wilderness will become a fruitful field, and the fruitful field will be turned, uh, will be will be turned into a forest. This is the work of the Spirit of God. And don't bother yourself asking God, how is He going to do it? How is He going to turn this wilderness in my life into a fruitful field? How? Oh, that's none of your business. Praise <laughs> God. It's none of your business. Allow God to deal with the how. Can you simply just believe Him? Because I'll tell you the truth, by the time God does it, and you look at how God did it, you feel like a big fool. Just like we were talking about yesterday. Who would have thought that in the camp of the Syria, in the Syrian army, there was enough food to crash the price of food in the whole of the city of Samaria. In the camp of an army. Not, not that Syria was beside them. No, they had left their country to come down to Samaria to deal with them. So the food they carried for the soldiers, not the community, not the, the city, the food they carried for their soldiers, that their soldiers were eating in camp, was enough to crash the price of food in the city. Only God does things like this. So why should you doubt Him? In all sincerity, why should you doubt God? Let me show you what He said in Joel. Book of Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2. Let's read from verse 23. It says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately. So praise God for the former rain. Praise God for everything you've seen so far. Praise God for the miracles you've enjoyed so far. But hey, it doesn't stop there. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. He said, this month he's sending the rain. So Joel had prophesied about this day. So, And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And guess what happens after that? And the floors shall be filled with wheat. And the vasts shall overflow with wine and oil. He is talking about provision. Now, is it not something of note that God pours the rain? And what you're seeing is not some spiritual activity in quotes. You are seeing some physical activity to meet the needs of people. This is what drives God, brothers and sisters. 
This is what drives God. And I pray the church world will come to this understanding. We, we think what drives God is some spiritual experience that will fade away. And but don't food fade away. No, you keep eating. You will continue to eat. See, spiritual experiences are wonderful. But if it doesn't translate to giving you peace in your day-to-day -day living, you're wrecking yourself. All God wants in your life is peace. Peace. I pray you come to that understanding of who God is and what he desires for you. So, Joel speaking here, he didn't say, now he says, I'll pour on you the, the former rain and latter rain in the first month. He didn't say, and you will start speaking in tongues for so long. No, he didn't explain all that part of what's going to happen. Rather, he says, and the floor shall be full of wheat. And the vat, now wheat, there is no figurative. He's talking about food. The floor shall be filled with wheat and vast, and the vast shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. It says you will eat and you will be full. Physical food. And you shall know, verse 27, and you shall know that I am the I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. The outpouring of the Spirit, the coming of the rain takes away shame. That thing that is supposed to cause shame in your life, He will take it away. He takes it away. And my people shall not be ashamed. And my people shall not be ashamed. see when the outpouring of God's spirit comes I think I was telling this on Monday it will affect let, let's let's look at it let's look at Joel 28 in chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterwards now after all these things happen I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon all, and also upon the servants and upon the handmen, in, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven, in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord and shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance and the Lord had said and in the remnants as the Lord have said had said and in the remnants whom the Lord shall call Now, when the Spirit is poured out, this is what begins to happen. It says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. What does it mean to prophesy? Jesus said, anyone who believes in me shall speak with new tongues. Okay? They shall speak with new tongues. So when it says, upon your sons and daughters, the Spirit will pour out and they will prophesy. He is saying they will begin to speak with a new language. They will begin to speak with a new language. What does it mean to speak with a new language? I'm not saying they didn't know Chinese before they start speaking Chinese or, or German or French or things like that. No, what I'm saying is they are 
their language, the way they communicate will change. Their vocabulary will be affected. That's what prophecy does. That's what vision does. Solomon had a vision, ninth dream, to be precise. And in that dream, God came to me. It was a dream. God came to him and said, ask me what you want. And he says, give me an understanding now so that I'll be able to rule these people. And God said, why wow, you've asked something I didn't think you were going to ask. I thought you were going to ask for the head of your enemy or you asked for this. He said, but look at what you asked for. I'll give it to you. And even what you have not asked for, I'll give it to you. He asked, you see, because his father had trained him to believe that wisdom is the principal thing. So the day he had an opportunity with God, even in his subconscious mind, that's what he asked. Now here's what happened when he woke up from, 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 from the dream. Now you can go study this for yourself. He gathered all his servants together for a feast. He declared a feast. Why are we feasting? He said, because God has given me wisdom. That was his faith. That was the step he took to confirm the dream that he had. He took a decision based on the dream that he had. See, listen to me. That's exactly what God is saying to you today. By the dream he had, his mindset was altered. Talking about Solomon. His mindset was, now this happens the same, this happens to you also. The purpose of prophecy, the purpose of prophesying, the purpose of every of those gifting, the purpose of these giftings is to affect your speech. The moment your speech is influenced by truth, now this is why God will visit you, this is why God will open up truth to you. The moment that happens, what God will be looking at is, what is the decision you're going to take next? So when God says, I'm, I'm sending rain, yes. When you begin to see manifestations of God's spirit in your life, in prophecy, in, in prayer, because there's, there's going to be a, a heightened um, grace to pray. Now, when I say heightened grace to pray, not praying with your own minds. There is a grace, there's a supply of grace to pray. Now, when you pray, you begin to speak new tongues. And when you speak new tongues, new understanding will begin to come to you. And as that understanding comes to you, begin to prophesy. Speak in line with what you're seeing. Prophesy to yourself. And number two, live true to the words that have come out of your mouth. Because every word you speak out of your mouth, Jesus said, you believe that those things that you say will come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. Now, you are training your heart, you're training your mind to depend on the Spirit of God. He's sending the rain that will cause a gushing of words to come to you. And you begin to release those words. As you release those words, those are words given to you by the Spirit of God. Then thoughts will begin to come to your mind. Those thoughts that come to your mind will, will spark up prophesying. Prophecy is not when you, oh, 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 my children, my children. That's not all prophecy is all about. Someone can be talking to you naturally and, and, and is prophesying. Someone's just gisting, to, gisting with you and just say that, you know, this is what the Lord's going to do. These are the things that are going to start happening. And like, okay, did they read it somewhere? Or why is he talking about it so casually? But it's prophesying. Now, what happens when you begin to prophesy? Observe the prophecy. Take a cue from it and gain wisdom. Because the decision that will change your life will be made by you. But the ingredients of making that decision is where all these things come in, prophesying, visions, and all the stuff. 
When your eyes are open to see vision, Solomon, when he saw that vision, threw a party, called all his servants together and threw a party for them. And then he told them, God have given me wisdom. That's why we're holding this party. We're celebrating God's wisdom. And it didn't take time for the whole nation to see indeed that God have given our king an uncommon wisdom. God will do the same and much more for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is doing the same and much more for you. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. If you will just set aside and begin to praise the Lord, just step aside. If you have time, just step aside now and begin to do things to praise the Lord. As you do, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I see water being poured on you. And I see your eyes, the realm, the realm of the Spirit is opened to you. You will begin to see things as you shut your eyes. And the things you see will bring you into the realm of visions and prophesying. Don't keep yourself from prophesying those things. Can you begin to speak them out? And as you speak them out, guess what's happening? Angels are hearing it. Men are hearing it. And guess who makes it good for you? The Lord makes it good. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a miracle happening in someone's home right now. There is something you've been all looking for for so long a time now. I hear the Lord say that thing has been found. And in a moment, you will hear the news that it has been found. You've been looking for something for a long while now. But in a moment, that thing, you will hear the news that that thing has been found. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wherever you are, just go ahead and start blessing the Lord. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I bless you. You are good. You are kind. You're so unique, Lord. I bless you for your grace that you have released upon us. I bless you, Lord. Praise God. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Bless him. Bless him. I see miracles taking place. I can't start talking about them. But as you bless the Lord, things are happening around you. Things are happening. Sicknesses are leaving. As you're blessing the Lord, get up and begin to do what you couldn't do before. I, I see someone who just got up. You've been having these serious knee pains in your leg. Now, I, I don't know if it's your knee or I think I'm feeling this um, right here, your femur or something like that. There's, there's so much pain that if you stand for so long, it's like your legs are on fire. But hey, as you get up to praise God now, begin to walk around, begin to walk around, lifting up your hands and blessing the name of the Lord. Just do it now. Begin to walk around. That pain is gone. You will not feel it again. I command that pain out of your body in the name of God. Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. My time is up. I bless you today. See you tomorrow. Bye.